Okay, so today we find ourselves at none other than LA's friendliest casino. I don't know how they got that tag, like what they had to do to earn that, but to be quite honest, the most fights I've ever seen in a casino in my entire life have occurred at the Commerce Casino. I've probably seen one or two at any other casino in my life, so I don't know how true that story holds. Anyways, today we're gonna be hopping into a 510 session at the trusty old Commerce we are on our upward trajectory to get to 15k and i thank you guys as always for helping out anyways not much more to talk about like i said besides you know have a great day i'm very thankful for you guys and let's hop into an episode and hopefully we run good i'm feeling good about today i don't know we played well last time so it's only good that we bounce back after the horrendous session we play a decent session hopefully this one's better see you guys uh see you guys at the mid-session update how about that as we said, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good, pretty locked in. Just quickly, if you guys happen to hear any snoring behind me, no, that is not falling asleep while I talk to you guys. That's actually my little puppy behind me just snoring away, it seems like. Anyways, catching you guys right up. I have King-9 here in the cutoff, it seems like. It's suited, it's pretty, and there's a blind straddle, or blind raise, excuse me, to $20. I make it $75. It folds all the way over to our friend here in the blind raise decides to make the call for $75 and we're going off to a flop. The flop comes ace, 10, eight, rainbow. Great board for my range. Don't need to go too large on these board textures considering we do have a couple of back doors as well as a range advantage here. I'm gonna go ahead and bet a catch all sizing of $50 somewhere right around a third pot. My opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call for $50 and we're going off to a turn card that comes a seven of clubs. One of the cards that I says that brings us some of that back door equity. And when my opponent decides to check it over to me, it's about time that we crank up the aggression. And by crank it up, I mean to the full-blown maximum pot. That's not, you know, the maximum here. We can bet anything. This is no limit hold'em. But we're going to go ahead and bet the pot here. Crank up the aggression. Putting up the thermostat to 110 degrees. It seems like we're in Vegas. My opponent thinks about it for a little bit before deciding to make the fold. So going to be having some hands for value there, obviously. And then going to be... Equity denying with a hand like ace king or ace queen. It's nice to have a bluff in that spot there, or a semi bluff, I should say, and I'm happy that that hand worked out in our favor. Moving right along. To be quite honest, what you guys will end up seeing this session is a lot of boredom, but I'm going to try my best to not stray away from a reasonable theory or a decent strategy in today's session. The cutoff decides to open a $30, one of the more passive, pretty tight players, I'd say. I go ahead and look down at king eight offsuit from the button. I'm going to go ahead and use this as a three bet here to make it $125 in position against someone who I perceive to have a very tight range and I think it's going to be pretty easy to play heads up post flop with. The flop comes pretty favorable for my range, ace four deuce with two diamonds and a heart. When the opposition checks to me, again, I don't need to go big here. Anywhere around a third of the pot works. I bet $80 and as you guys see, I can't even get the chips out fast enough before he makes a fold. Pretty nice play there with king high. Obviously, we had absolutely nothing. I don't even know if we had a backdoor, but it, it's nice when you're when you're able to take some chips down and in, in spots that you're not going to be regularly doing so. As you guys have seen to this point, I've been playing unbelievably aggressive post and pre-flop, and it uh, doesn't seem like I'm going to be changing my mind anytime soon. Yes, I'm foreshadowing a little bit in this next hand, but buckle up. This ends up being quite the weird spot. I'm in the blind raise for $20. There's an early position limper for $20. The hijack decides to raise to $85. The cutoff makes the call. I look down at queen jack of spades here from the big blind. I mean, this is a really good spot. I think I'm in between going with a three bet here as well as just flat calling. I think if my hand was offsuit, I'd actually prefer to use it as a three bet because of the bluffing merit. I think my hand's a little too strong and I'd hate to be blown off my equity if I three bet and get four bet. I'm gonna obviously have to fold. So I decide on doing the latter, playing a little more passively waiting to hit a flop of some sort and just making the flat call here the limper decides to make the call as well and we're going four ways off to a flop that comes pretty decent 
King 9 4 Rainbow. There is a spade out there, so we have a back door as well as a gut shot. I decide to check it over to the initial razor, continuing to play in this beautiful thing we call the flow of poker. The initial razor has the reins of the hand, and he decides to send out a seabed of $90. Going pretty small here, to be quite honest. It folds back over to me, and in this instance, I can either go with the flat call or do a little something different and, and kind of set my own price here and raise. The benefits of raising is I think that more often than not, I'm going to be able to get my opponent to check back the turn. And if that's the case, I'm getting to a river for pretty cheap. I think if I just make the call, I allow my opponent to barrel off with some other weak holdings, hands that don't have a pair or that pick up a draw or some type of equity. And if I take the reins in the hand here, if I make my hand, I can build a massive pot. Or if I add any equity by getting any more equity, if it's a spade card, if I make a pair. So at the end of the day, I decide to raise to $240, playing this more aggressive. My opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call. We're going heads up to a turn card that comes the five of clubs. It is a black card, but it's uh, unfortunately not an Amex. And it's also not a spade. So we don't pick up any more equity. And if that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and go with plan A and try to get to a cheap showdown by checking at this point. It can seem like waving the white flag to my opponent, and that is something that I am pretty wary of. It seems like he has caught a scent to this trail by sniffing me out here in my nonsense as he decides to bet $300. Can't do much here besides fold. I think the double check raise would have been pretty cool, but I didn't have it in me. I ended up making what seems like a pretty disciplined fold. Unfortunately for us, we weren't able to get to the river for cheap, and uh, we'll live and learn, and we'll fight another day against this opponent, as you guys will see. Nearly an hour has gone by before this next hand comes out, and you guys will see, like we mentioned, boredom catches almost all of us. Like I said, I'm trying to play my A game, and in this spot, I guess a suited king is going to be a part of that, or at least I'm going to do my best to not blast off post-flop. I look down into suited Broadway, and look, that's good enough for me to open. I make it $35 from the plus one position. Plus two decides to make the call. The small blind and the big blind decide to make the call as well. It seems like $35 was not enough uh obviously it wasn't so we're going four ways off to a flop that comes deuce three queen rainbow a pretty reasonable flop for our hand it is a fairly dry board texture so i actually don't need to go very large here going large kind of defeats all the purposes and it keeps my opponent's ranges very very narrow that's not really what we need we'd like to begin called by gut shots random weaker deuces in this spot and just a bunch of random floats so i decide to make it 50 dollars just the plus two opponent decides to make the call, and we're looking for a pretty reasonable turn card, and it comes just that, as it comes the king of diamonds. It does bring a backdoor flush draw out there, but we do improve the two pair. On this situation, earlier, as you guys remember, I decided to lead for near the size of the pot, or the pot, I should say. When I had king high and I turned an open ender. So we're going to go ahead and do this with the value hand now, betting $210 here, going very, very massive. Going again near the size of the pot, if not just around that. And again, at this point, I think in my head I'm targeting a hand like Queen 10, Queen Jack, or King Jack. Some kind of weird float here. Obviously, straight draws or flush draws as well. And uh, my opponent thinks about it for a brief moment before inevitably making the fold. I'm pretty disappointed. I actually don't see the value in betting so large here. I have pretty much a lock on this hand, I think. There's not a whole lot of rivers that make me pissed off besides maybe a board pairing card but even a diamond i'm not too scared about considering i think my opponent might be betting that on the turn or might be check raising that on the turn to be quite honest i don't love my sizing but again it's something that i'll talk to my coaches about and see what they think but i'm interested to know what you guys think do you think betting near the size of the pot on that turn card was a good idea or a bad idea anyways i'm gonna go ahead and kick it over to a mid-session update because if we're opening king do suited from early position it's about time i take a little bit of a walk all right everyone we're currently in a mid-session update now as you guys can see from the hand so far it's been unbelievably boring there is absolutely nothing to update you guys on i don't know where he's at richard's over here he was kind enough i caught some riffraff off the street so thanks for coming out oh, for sure. he's also supporting. grinding right now he's playing three five three five, three so five. He's, he's grinding the streets with me but uh, hopefully we end up getting a good session uh, i'm gonna go back probably about another hour left to me to play and then i'll let you guys know how i do Got some snacks because I'm feeling very thirsty. I'll see you guys at the end of the session. Hopefully we run better. And don't forget to...
Get yourself a hat. Get your merch, huh? Your so, like I promised you guys, looking to get my head screwed on tight. How often have you guys heard the, the, the old saying, never go broke in a limped pot? Well, let's try not to do that here, as the cutoff decides to limp for $20, as the blind raise is on here for 20 bucks. The small blind, the button, and myself and the big blind decide to complete here when I look down at 8-6 offsuit. It's a horrible hand, but because the straddle doesn't have an option, I actually, you know, I don't really mind just limping here. So that's what I inevitably end up doing. We're going off to a flop that comes 10-6 deuce rainbow. The action checks all the way over fairly quickly to the button, who after some joking around decides to check it back. We're going off to a turn card, hoping to improve in some fashion. And it comes, bing, the eight of hearts. It does bring in a straight draw and it does bring a backdoor flush draw, but we improve to two pair. Small blind assassin to lead out for $50. I'm gonna go ahead and raise him to 150 buckaroonies. Seems like I can definitely be getting value from worse hands, from drawing hands. I think the list goes on and on. I don't need to chew your ear out for that. My opponent almost instantly makes the call. So not sure what I'm looking for on the river, but I'll tell you one thing. The deuce of clubs is definitely not what I'm looking for. I'm pretty tilted at this point. The session hasn't been going like great or bad. It's just like I can't seem to make a hand. And even when I do, it seems like I've just run into some weird runouts. Obviously, when he checks it to me, I insta snap check it looking to lose to like some kind of single pair now that improves to a two pair. And uh, we were wrong. He didn't have a single pair. So that's good, right? No, he had a boat. He had pocket tens. He flopped top set. So that river was actually the epitome. Like the poker gods tell me, hey, shut up there, little buddy. You just got bailed out on that river because I was definitely going to bet pretty big on most rivers. So, hey, that's the epitome of running good when you're running bad. So I'll take it. Can't complain. To be quite honest, uh, I'm being a little hard on myself. I haven't played horrible, to be quite honest. But like I said, we're expecting to play better, especially with how bad we played a couple sessions ago. I'm doing my best to keep myself in check, to do what I've talked to my coaches about, and what I've promised the subscribers and all the people commenting down below. So, with all that being said, forgive me in this next hand, because it's quite the doozy. It's literally the very next hand, as you guys saw, the very next shuffle. Under the gun decides to raise to $35. Everyone folds and it gets over to me in the small blind, and I look down at pocket fives. Like I said, not a whole lot of just flatting here from the small blind, but considering we both are around 150 big blinds effective, I don't mind just calling here and set mining. Could be pretty lucrative if we make our hand, considering this player is unbelievably tight what it feels like pre-flop. So I'm going to go ahead and call here, and the flop comes queen, 10, 6 with two diamonds out there. I decide to check to continue playing in flow. My opponent decides to bet here pretty small. I'm going to go ahead and make the call. We're going off to a turn card that comes the Ten of Spades. Now things are getting a little interesting as the second card does pair here. This is where I think I play the hand really poorly. I do decide to check, but I think this is a card I could be bluffing here. The Ten is going to be significantly more favorable for my range. Maybe Ace Ten suited and Jack Ten suited are very credible from the small blind, I feel like. But nonetheless, it's less likely for my opponent from the under the gun position to be raising with a 10 it's more likely that i will be so when he decides to inevitably bet 75 dollars, i end up making the call and we're going off to river that comes the king of spades not a good card as now both the runner runner flush raw as well as the runner runner you know gut shot to the gut shot pretty much all of his hands now improved to a pair or some sort of better hand than five so the jig is up I check it over to him, obviously giving up at this point. He bets $275. I instantly make the fold here. I'm not going to kill myself over this hand. The only thing that's, I think, egregiously incorrect, in my opinion, is not leading out on the turn. Whether he calls or folds is not the point. If we get to the turn and that turn comes out, I think I've got to be betting it and taking over the reins of the hand. Anyways, looking to improve on this last hand, and I've saved the very, very best for last, so let's hop right into it. Hopping right into it is what we're doing, and I've got to catch you guys up. So I'm going to ask you guys to buckle up for this rodeo because this gets out of hand unbelievably quickly. Early position decides to limp here. I'm in the cutoff, and I decide to look down at pocket queens and isolate to $50. The gentleman to my direct left, who has been pretty active to say the least, is uh, going to go ahead and make it $175. 
The big blind who's definitely done this already in this session. He's four bet us in a spot where this very action player three bet me. And he does it once again for $410. The action gets back over to me. I'm sitting on about $1,500 effective. And uh, I don't feel like I have much of a decision. If I'm not going to be jamming this hand as a five bet, I'm just kind of letting this guy run over me. I feel like he's obviously a good thinking player. And when he's four betting, he's not always going to have the nuts. He's going to have things that are far from it. So I decided to jam my $1,510. To no surprise, our action friend here from the button decides to pretty quickly stick it in. And the big blind tanks for a little bit of time before inevitably saying that he has probably the worst hand and makes the call. We're going three ways all in pre-flop for a whopping $4,500 all in pot pre-flop massive monster pot. And the flop comes four, three, three. The turn ends all of our worries as it comes a queen and the river comes an inconsequential seven of clubs. I show my pocket queens immediately. The gentleman to my left, our action friend, decides to show ace ten of clubs. So he backed doored a flush. Luckily for us, we did have the boat and we take down an unbelievably ridiculously sized pot. Definitely the biggest pot I think I've played at the Commerce 510 game. Considering this game is a $1,500 cap, it is pretty hard to build some really, really massive pots. But to sum up what was a pretty stale session, thank you, Poker Gods, for helping me out there. The good thing is to note that I did 5-bet with the best hand. My opponents did notify me that I had the best hand. And just like that, we're going to wrap up what was a pretty interesting session uh, and by interesting, I don't I don't mean that it was pretty boring But I want to thank you guys all dearly from the bottom of my heart for watching this long And if you have make sure to click the like button Let's store it over to me in person and watch the outro Alrighty folks, I have Burdened Richard enough for the day. I think I uh, we just ended up wrapping up Nothing really crazy to report besides the fact that we played one massive hand the rest of the session was like unbelievably boring as you guys saw and I'm sorry about that, but that's the reality of playing live poker. Started the session pretty late and it's already like way past midnight. It's like one or two, no, it's, it's like three in the morning. So super slow session. Obviously I'm super happy that even through the slow session, we were able to get a cooler and hold in a massive spot. Pretty crazy how things can instantly turn around in poker, but I'm not complaining. Anyways, if you guys haven't already, make sure to click the subscribe button, like and comment down below. Let me know where else you guys want me to play poker. I really don't mind. I'm happy to travel as these travel, you know, things are lifted. Well, as I was editing, I forgot to let you guys know what the hell I was in and out for. So I should probably do that now. We ended up into today's game for $2,200 even and out for $4,215. For a grand total of a whopping $2,015 win. That's pretty reasonable for a $1,500 max game. I'm going to take it. 200 plus big blinds. I'll definitely take it any day of the week. As you guys see, the mass ban has been uh, lifted in commerce. So that's nice. You can get... Uh, it feels a little more real now. Anyways, that's it for me and Richard. We're going to head out. Subscribe. Like the video. And those new winners... See you guys in Vegas. Oh yeah, the new winners. Make sure you send your application, guys. We have like a month left of that. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for everything. Stay happy, stay healthy. More importantly, run good at the tables, guys. Deuces.